Hello, everyone. My name is LaToya. I am one of the financial coaches here at WIN. I am going to be your moderator for today. So I will be the person responding to you in the chat room. So we encourage you guys to be interactive today. Um, the presenter, um, she's okay with you um, coming off your uh, microphones if you need to ask a question. Um, if you want to open your camera, great. If you're not comfortable with that, it, you don't have to open it. It's up to you. We want you to be comfortable and to be able to enjoy the presentation for today. Um, just want to give you guys a little information about WIN. WIN is a Kansas City-based nonprofit. Uh, we have been in the Kansas City metro area for 35 years. So next week, we will be celebrating our 35th year um, being able to provide services to uh, women in our community. Uh, we really strive on helping women to um, become st with stability, um, helping them with uh, employment, and help also connecting with financial coaches. I uh, like to pride myself in saying that women, uh, WIN uh, meets the woman where she is. So if you're coming to WIN because you need employment assistance, it, that could look like a variety of ways. That could be a resume, that could be mock interviewing, or if you're needing to meet with a financial coach because you want to get in charge of your finances, um, if you're needing to get in touch with a case manager, we offer all of those services, employment service, financial service, and personal development. Um, so if you come in needing one service, great. If you come in, you want all three and see all that WIN has to offer, uh, we are happy to assist you in any way that you can. We are the biggest cheerleaders you have you will ever meet. Uh, you will always drive the car when it comes to WIN. We are the backseat uh, passengers. We're cheering you on. We are, you know, equipping you with different tools that you can use to make sure that you're getting to the destination that you would like to go to. Um, so throughout this presentation, I am going to be putting in information about WIN, like our website, contact information. We also have a wonderful workshop this afternoon called Self Care um, to help you um, take care of yourself. As women, we often put ourselves on the back burner. We take care of everyone else and then whatever we have, the little bit we have left, we want to take care of ourselves and really we should take care of ourselves first before we start taking care of others. So I'll be putting that in there for anyone who's interested in that workshop. So again, I'll be moderating the chat box. So if you have questions or comments, um, you can either come off the audio and uh, speak directly to our presenter or you can um, just put it in the chat box and I will make sure um, that she knows your comment. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lee Han. Lei Han, please forgive me if I said it wrong. And she's going to present leadership and management. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Latoya. And uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Lei Han, and I've been working with Women's Employment Network as a volunteer for almost two years now. Uh, this truly is a great organization and they're doing a lot of neat things and I really enjoy working with them. So uh, you, you, you're in uh, for a great treat, uh, great treat. Uh, I worked at Cerner uh, for almost 23 years. Uh, I was started as a software engineer and then I was the vice president of the platform development organization when I retired in 2019. So my background uh, is mostly in the healthcare and IT uh, area, uh, but leadership development and mentoring has been a passion uh, always, uh, both before and after my retirement. Uh, so I'm uh, very grateful to have the opportunity to uh, talk to you all about this topic today. So um, these are big topics. Obviously, we won't be able to uh, cover everything. And so what I'm thinking we'll do is we click into just talk about some basic concepts and then maybe pick a few areas to dive in a little bit. Um, and then, uh, you know, as we go along, if you have any questions, feel free just uh, to speak up or put them in the chat window. Um, and uh, so we're going to go from there. So before we get started, I do want to do a little exercise. So if you have a, a piece of paper and a pen, uh, you can use them. If not, that's okay. So want you to think about the worst manager uh, you have ever had. Um, some, somebody who really frustrates you and think about three words that describe this experience, this person, what that looked like, right? Okay. And you probably know what we're going to do next. Next, we're going to uh, do think about the best manager you have had. And again, use three words 
uh, to describe uh, this person, um, you know, what uh, a bad relation, what made that relationship wonderful, right? What made it member memorable? So use three words to describe that. Okay. Um, now envision you are this wonderful manager yourself um, and your team members are asked to do this same exercise. Uh, they are asked to use three words to describe you. Uh, what do you want those three words to be? Um, and write them down. Uh, you don't need to overthinking this, just whatever come to mind and that will be fine. So this is a kind of a word cloud put together uh, from a survey result uh, from about 5,000 people. Um, uh, it's really when they ask the question of what make a great manager? And these are the words that people use uh, to describe that. Uh, you probably will uh, find some of the words uh, you use to answer the, you know, the second or third question here. Um, they are pretty common at the end of the day, what we think uh, make a great manager. So here's our agenda today. Um, we're going to uh, talk about leadership and management, just some very basic concept, kind of level the ground a little bit. Um, and then uh, we're going to dive in a few areas. So to be or not to be, so this is about um, do you, um, do you want to be a manager? So that's probably the first question. So maybe you're an individual contributor today, but you're kind of thinking, maybe I want to take on more responsibility or different responsibilities. Um, so there are you know, going to be a few questions and you can ask yourself, kind of think through that. Um, a guide in the driver's seat. So this is about uh, delivering business result, which really at the end of the day is the most important element. Uh, of being a manager of the management job. Uh, feedback is a gift. So this is about communication. Uh, again, another essential element uh, of it, uh, of the management and leadership. Um, and then the, the most precious commodity, this is about time management. Um, but ironically, we probably won't have time to actually talk about this topic. But I feel this is an area that many uh, managers, especially the newer ones, that struggle. And so I do want to uh, include the, some uh, tips here. And then uh, when we send out the slides, you can um, have some starting points to do for the research. Um, you know, there are plenty of resources out there. So, um, and you know, if you think about a leadership and management, they are, the, the skills are not really just for managers, that anybody can benefit from it. So I have some tips um, um, if you are an individual contributor, what are some of the things you can do today? Um, and so I, for each topic, I have a slide called try it out. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about those as well. So sounds good? Okay. So I have uh, two columns here um, on the left. Those are kind of a list of things managers often spend their time on. And on the right is kind of a list of things um, leaders um, focus on. So as you can see, the management and leadership skills, these are uh, kind of um, intertwined concept. It's pretty difficult to talk about one without the other, but there are some uh, subtle differences, right? Or obvious differences. So for one, um, managers have direct reports. Uh, their position is given um, by somebody um, in the org chart. Um, you know, they will have the title of manager or team lead or whatever it is, right? But if you think about leaders, uh, they are self-made. They don't need other people to give, a, give them a role and say, you are a leader. All they need to have is they have followers. Uh, and uh, they have followers because they have earned other people's trust. Uh, they have integrity, they have competency, and people know when they follow them, uh, they're going to uh, lead them to the right places. And that's why, you know, uh, they call leaders. And the leaders influence people, they energize people, they 
uh, kind of have a vision what the future ideal state should look like. And they share that vision, they empower people, they inspire people, uh, they focus a lot on why we want to do that and not necessarily the specific on how. Uh, they do have the skill, but um, the, the why is more important. Uh, but if you think about managers, um, they are given the task to deliver, uh, provide a specific function, deliver specific business results. So they spend a lot of time uh, build a plan, uh, give uh, assigned tasks to their team members, coordinate uh, from you know among different teams. They give very specific directions, uh, provide the structure and resources. Um, so we often say that um, managers manage with head. So they um, kind of focus on the objectives, the, the, the KPIs, the uh, processes, the procedures, right? Um, but leaders lead with heart. Um, you know, they focus on people, uh, treat them with respect, they help them grow and motivate them. And so they're, that's kind of, um, as you can see, uh, they're, they're, they're different, um, but they go hand in hand. Uh, they complement to each other. And if you um, master uh, both skill sets and apply them, and that's how you achieve awesome results. So uh, very brave and you know, just touch on some of the basic concepts of management and leadership here. So any questions before we move on? Okay. Okay, so um, the first question, if you are an individual contributor today, uh, the, you know, you look at other managers and say, you know, I, I think I can do that too. Um, or maybe I can do a better job. Um, so um, it's something on your mind, you're considering it, right? Um, so if you think about what managers do, they really is, the job is no longer about um, what he or she can do, can produce as an individual, as one person. It's really about to support the team effort uh, to maximize the outcome of the team, is to enable everybody to be the best version of themselves and then to improve their productivity. It's about maximize the team's outcome. So I think that's a key element of um, a manager's job. And so here are some of the questions or things you can consider kind of um, just to see um, if this would be something that is interesting. So for one, um, do you like to help other people, put other people's needs above your own? This is not necessarily say, oh, you know, like um, you, you, you don't care about yourself. That's not what it means. It's really about bring uh, the best out of other people, uh, deliver the business result as a team. Um, it, sometimes it's, it may not be appropriate analogy, but sometimes being a manager, there's an element of it is like being the parent of a big family, right? Is um, you are responsible at the end of the day, responsible for the results of the team, of your team members, but you don't always have um, control over what they do, uh, their behaviors. So, so it's messier. Of course, you have tools to help you do those things, um, but it's not always easy. And so that may or may not be something that uh, you enjoy doing. Um, the third one is, um, are you willing to give up being uh, some of the things you enjoy doing as an individual contributor? So the point here is uh, being a manager takes time and takes energy. So maybe there are things you really uh, enjoy doing as an individual contributor. So for example, if you're a nurse, uh, you enjoy talking uh, to the patients, helping them see that big smile on their face um, when they get better. Um, or maybe if you're a software engineer, you enjoy writing the code and to see it actually working in production. So being a manager likely will take some of that time away from you uh, for doing that. And uh, 
and the trade-off is you help others uh, to to do it better and to have a bigger uh, you know bigger outcome better outcome bigger impact but you may not get to do it uh, yourself and sometimes that could be a dissatisfier uh, other things to consider uh, your aptitude, aptitude, inclinations. So we talked about managers, you know, they go to meetings a lot, they make plans for other people, they tell other people what to do, they monitor the progress. When things are not going well, they may need to have those uh, sometimes uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations to give that uh, constructive feedback. Um, so, uh, you know, none of those skills uh, any you know people are born with, right? Those are all learned skills. So if you don't know how to do them, that's not a problem. But if you try those things and you just say, that really frustrates me, it's just not in me. And uh, that, you know, like you may want to consider it may not be a great fit. It doesn't mean you can't do it. You just need to be aware and not let that uh, really just overwhelm you and you get frustrated all the time and you just kind of need to be aware uh, of those situations and then find ways to manage those. And the last one I kind of want to touch on is, is your current circumstances. So maybe there is a professional certificate you want to get and that takes time. Um, maybe you just uh, you started a family or maybe the uh, organization or the company uh, you are with uh, is uh, kind of in decline and in order for you to uh, have a, uh, you know, career growth and management role and you need to uh, go uh, work for a different company and that whole process may be uncomfortable and you may not be ready for that. So all those are things to consider. Um, but the, the, I don't want this meant to be a list to discourage you to consider it. Uh, I want you to look at this and say, you know, like those are the things to consider, sure. But if you answer yes to any of this question and say, maybe I want to give it a try, right? Um, you, you should go for it, you should try it. Don't let those considerations discourage you. There are more for things you want to consider so you know what you're getting yourself into. Are you aware of it? But that doesn't mean that you say, oh, you know, I don't want to do it. So don't like, until you try something, you don't know if you're good at it. You don't know if you like it. So, um, so if you want to give it a try, here are some other things. Um, this is not the try it out slides I was talking about earlier. Uh, some of the things you may want to consider. So the first is um, put your name in the hat. Let people know uh, you are interested you have the aspiration uh, to try it. So sometimes um, we kind of wish our managers or our executives just know we want to advance, advance our career. We secretly wish they can read our minds. The reality is um, they're human, they can read our minds. So uh, when you do have those one-on-one -on -one conversations, uh, do make it clear and say, hey, um, you know, it's not about, oh, I worked hard, where's my big promotion? It's, that's probably not the best way to approach the conversation. It's probably more about, uh, I really enjoy our group. I enjoy uh, working here. Uh, I want to grow with the organization. Um, I want to do more. Um, I want to, you know, further advance my career, uh, help me get there. Uh, so a lot of people know. I think that's uh, very trivial, but uh, it is an uh, important step to take. And the other one is uh, when opportunity knocks on the door to answer them. So a lot of time opportunities pre present themselves as challenges. Uh, they basically are the things that other people don't know how to do, and chances are you don't know how to do them either. They're hard. Uh, you may not want to do them, um, but um, really those are opportunities. Uh, it's important that you recognize them and then you uh, kind of step up and uh, to show your capability, to show uh, your commitment. So um, keep that in mind um, when, you know, next time you are faced with uh, some challenges at work and then kind of 
maybe uh, change that mindset a little bit and see these challenges could very well be the opportunities for me. So, um, um, Leihan, we had a comment yeah. in the chat room, um, and I think it may be a previous uh, the previous slide. It X um, um, Ms. Freeman. I think it may be the one before that one. Uh, want to know what about listening? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think the uh, the the communicate if you you know the whole communication skill, um, it's listening probably is the I think is the most important one, but it's often overlooked one, right? We you know we we often focus on how to tell you know express ourselves, talk about ourselves, and tell people what we want, tell people what they're not doing well, but we forget about listening. And you know, especially listening with empathy, I think that's important. So the, I guess by no means this is a comprehensive list. You're, you know, this leadership and management skill here. This is probably more just a few things I picked and kind of show a little bit contrast. So there are a lot of um, uh, there are a lot of skills that I probably didn't touch on in this slide. So thank you for the question. Okay. And then there's also, she also put an additional comment says, also meant it in terms of feedback when she was talking um, about listening. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think I probably, I do have a section talk about communication. So maybe we'll touch on that a little bit more and see if I address those. Okay. Uh, okay, so joy a company that is growing. So joy is something that is growing. This one is a interesting one. And sometimes it is hard because we could very well be working for a group, a company or an industry um, that we really like, but the reality is it is drying out. It is not growing. And then you kind of have a hard decision to make and say, do I make the jump and to join something that is growing kind of the future or do I stick with it? So, you know, every, there, everybody's circumstances is different. So I, I won't be able to give a standard answer here, but it's probably more be aware of it. And uh, um, that, that could be the situation you are in. And if you do find yourself in those situations, um, the good thing is many of the knowledge, the skills, the experience you have are portable. So when you go to something new, it could be scary, but at the same time, you can bring the assets you have with you. Uh, so if you have not done it, it will be a good exercise, kind of do a, a assessment inventory and just to list up, list, make a list of things that um, uh, you're good at, uh, you have done in the past and kind of uh, to look at them and say, what are some of the things that are portable? Or even look at the list and say, if I want to jump from point A to point B, what are some of the skills I need to intentionally develop that I know this new industry I'm interested in that uh, would be valuable in there? So there are very specific technical skills, but there are a lot of those soft skills uh, that are portable. So um, I guess do keep that in mind. Um, and then the last bullet, bullet points I have here is about share your success stories. So, so this is about um, don't be shy about um, tell others what you have done. This, you know, obviously, you, you know, include talking to your managers, um, you know, let him or her know uh, your success, as well as uh, if your, your company have internal tools, uh, ways that you can share what you have done well, as well as uh, external, uh, like LinkedIn, um, you know, like, or uh, maybe, uh, uh, local meetup or conferences or whatever that may be. So do share your stories. Um, and then so people recognize what you're good at and when the opportunities comes up and they will think about you. So, you know, this person could be a good fit for that. So, uh, and then the last bullet point here is really just a reminder. We probably all know this uh, trustworthy above all, you know, both the, the two key elements is the personal integrity and the professional competency. Uh, people know that uh, you have their back 
and, and also you are capable of have a, having their back. And then they will remember we talk about being a leader is really about uh, you just need to have people follow you and the people follow you because of these reasons. So um, any other questions before we move on uh, to talk about delivering business results? There are no new questions in the chat box. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, getting in the driver's seat, uh, delivering business results. So this one is, uh, seems to be an obvious one, but there are actually researchers out there kind of talk about uh, the difference, um, the difference emphasis is um, women leaders uh, versus, I guess, men leaders put on the importance about delivering business results. And sometimes we, uh, I guess we focus on developing our soft skills. We think about to kind of create the culture for the company, you know, like those, those things. And then we forget, not, for, not necessarily forget, we kind of just uh, um, not put enough emphasis on at the end of the day, being a manager is about carry out the mission, the vision, the objectives of our organization, which translate to your daily uh, work is deliver those business results. So this is really important element to make sure that uh, don't underestimate the importance of that. Um, First one is have a plan. Uh, again, this is not just about have a plan for yourself anymore. Uh, really is about have a plan for the whole team, right? Is think about uh, the constraints, the resource constraints you may have to live with. And just then your team member, their strengths, their weakness and their aspiration, what do they want to do? Um, think about what does success look like? Um, how do you, what the, what's the end game? How do you, how do you know you get there? and how are you going to measure success and failure? And when things are not going well, what's your contingency plan? So all of that is part of having a plan. Um, so that's important. Um, the other element is um, kind of be accountable. You kind of the, the saying that back stop here, stop with you, stop with you, right? Uh, you own it, uh, see it, own it and solve it. When somebody come to you with a problem, um, it doesn't matter if it's your customer, your manager, your peer, or your team member, it doesn't matter where it comes from, um, make sure that you find a right owner for that problem if you don't believe you or your team um, are the right one to solve them, right? Um, basically, make sure things don't fall through the crack. And the other element is um, when you solve a problem, not only solve it, but also think about how do you prevent it from this set of problem ever happen again, really solve it. So uh, the scale of root cause analysis and preventive actions, and you know, those are important skills um, to have. Um, keep your promises. Um, this one, it's, it's kind of a balance. Uh, you know, we don't want to be too risk averse, kind of we want to be aggressive, uh, when we uh, tell people what we're going to do. But on the other hand, um, do you have the courage to say no uh, to things that you just don't think it's going to work out? A lot of time, not a lot, sometimes we don't like to have those um, uncomfortable conversations up front. Uh, we don't want to people, tell people uh, this is not going to work out. And so we kind of say, yeah, sure, we can try it but you'll know from your experience, from your knowledge, that no matter how hard you try, how hard your team try, this is just a losing battle. And then have the courage to have that conversation up front and uh, not just hope it will go away because it won't. Um, so do, um, you know, you want to be artful. You, you know, you, you want to have, kind of have master the art of saying no, uh, say no without saying no, and uh, uh, to help people understand where you come from, but uh, do, do keep that in mind. Um, making decisions, uh, there are plenty of resources out there talk about this topic. Uh, actually, I think when has a class talk about decision-making and problem solving. Um, so 
but so I'm not going to get in the detail of this one. But one thing I want to mention about making decision is really um, making timely decision is important for the team because now other people depending on you uh, to kind of you know they may have suggestions and say we should do this and but sometimes they, they depending on you to tell them is it a thumbs up or thumbs down right um, in those cases no decision is the worst decision you're making because no decision is a decision <laughs> without you consciously making it, but it is a decision. Uh, so be aware of that. Do make timely decisions and do understand the impact of you now making them. Um, again, it's not just about uh, you as an individual contributor, it's about the team. So, and of course, the bigger scope you have, the bigger impact uh, there is when there is a lack of decision. Um, the, Next topic, um, this one is a little bit controversial, but I think it is important uh, that we are all aware of this. There's no way um, when you are uh, a manager, uh, you are they. Um, so there are probably going to be decisions that made that you don't agree, um, but uh, you know, like telling your team member and say, oh, you know, they made this decision, they made me do this. That doesn't really help the situation. It doesn't help your, uh, you uh, build your reputation um, uh, either because um, really you, if you disagree with those decisions, you should have that conversation um, with the decision maker uh, privately and tell them your concern, why you think it's a bad decision, why we shouldn't do it. But if you can't convince them, at the end of the day, your job is to carry them out uh, after the decisions are made. Uh, and of course, I'm not talking about uh, immoral or illegal activities here. I'm talking about uh, business decisions that um, likely you know, may or may not be popular. So for example, if there is a product line that has been declining, you know, the, the market no longer, uh, it's no, no longer uh, popular in the market and the company is considering shutting it down. And then of course, you know, people's job may be impacted by that, um, you know, those tough decisions. Um, so uh, be aware of that and uh, hold others accountable. This is mainly just a reminder, of course, you hold your team members accountable, you hold yourself accountable but also have the spine to hold your manager, your executive, your peers accountable. Um, you know, like to the, a lot of time have the courage to have those tough conversations. That's how you earn respect from your team members and honestly from others as well. So they're uncomfortable, but they're necessary. Okay. Okay, here's our try it out slide. So you are not a manager, uh, you're an individual contributor. Uh, what can you do, right? Uh, what are some of the things you may want to try? Uh, the first one is raise your hand. Um, when you see there is a problem, uh, something not going well, or opportunity to improve, uh, do bring them up. And uh, when you bring them up and not only bring up the problems, but also the potential solutions, you can see um, some options. So uh, Neil Patterson, the founder of uh, the company I used to work for, he used to have a saying called uh, no propose, no oppose. Uh, so when I first joined the company, when I heard of this, I was like, that doesn't make sense just because I, as a little software engineer don't know how to solve the problem, doesn't mean I shouldn't bring it up. Uh, but over years, I, I think I get, uh, I appreciate what he said much more and I think I understand it much better. I think what he was really saying is, I do want you to bring problems uh, when you see things are not going well, but don't stop there. Uh, chances are you are the one closest to the situation, you understand it the most, uh, you probably have proposals on how uh, we can make things better. So do bring those options, do bring those solutions. Um, so I, I used to say that uh, it's always easy to answer a multiple choice question than an SE question. So 
if you uh, you know talk to your manager and say, here's our problem, here are option A, B, and C, uh, I think we should go with option B. It's probably much easier for the manager to make a decision and say, that sounds good, let's do that. Versus you come and say, I see this problem, it sucks. Uh, I just hate it, but I don't know what we can do to make it better. It probably take a much longer route to um, get to the outcome you want to see because that becomes an essay question for the manager. So uh, something to uh, keep in mind and uh, volunteer to help. So uh, you may feel you're already busy, you really don't have time to help, uh, but um, if you think about what managers do, right? The, the title may sound glamorous, but the reality um, is they pick up a lot of slack and just, you know, if they see something need to be done and nobody uh, is available to do it, they probably will end up doing it themselves. So, so, uh, they, 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 sometimes that job could be overwhelming. So if you do um, see those and uh, if you find there are things that you can do to help and you volunteer to help, uh, that probably will make a, a strong impression. But the benefit doesn't stop there. Really by um, practicing those uh, skills, do the things that you normally wouldn't uh, do, uh, that probably will allow you to uh, try it and see if you like to um, do those tasks, give you a taste, and then kind of uh, allow you to practice. So it's kind of like, um, you know, riding a bicycle or swimming. People can tell you how to do it, you can read about how to do it, but until you try them, uh, you, you, really, you really can't really master those skills. So I think that's a side uh, benefit of volunteer to help. And of course, you want to be mindful about uh, what uh, you, you do volunteer, right? You don't want to be the doorman and just say, I'll do whatever. Uh, you want to uh, look at your skill set and look at the needs and then kind of find the right fit. So um, the other one, the other aspect of this is make others around you better. Remember, um, manager's job is maximize the outcome of the team. And so again, this is opportunity to make everybody else on the team better. And so you can maximize uh, the outcome of the team. Uh, so first thing to do is be an expert in your domain, polish your skill. And then once you do that, and then you share that learning, share that knowledge with others on your team. And don't kind of just feel like, oh, if I teach others how to do this, I'm going to lose my job. Uh, chances are that's not going to be the case. Chances are by you mastering those skills and teaching, training your, uh, your replacement, you have the opportunity to get uh, bigger and better things. Uh, become a mentor. Um, this is not necessarily just the people in your team. It could be people in similar roles outside of your team, outside of your organization. And don't underestimate uh, what you know, even if you are only on the job or uh, you know, in the team for three months, but you probably know something that the person just joined doesn't know. And so you can be a mentor, you can help that person. Again, this is another way to allow you to practice. Do you enjoy helping other people grow, right? Because that's one thing we talked about what managers need to do. They need to help their team to be productive. So this all give you opportunity to try them. And then think of creative ways to make your team better. So this is not about working harder, this is about working smarter. So are there new processes you guys can um, uh, implement? Are there new tools? Maybe there is a new software that uh, we should adopt. Uh, or maybe um, there's uh, this awesome, um, kind of a video from this conference that if uh, every team member uh, can learn some new skills and can you know make uh, things easier. So think of those ways uh, to make the team as a whole uh, to be more productive. So uh, just some ideas uh, to, to try. So any questions before we move on to the next topic? There's no questions in the chat box. Okay, thank you. And by the way, feel free to uh, just uh, ask any questions you may have as I go along. So uh, don't worry about interrupting me, so. 
Hi, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, just a quick question. So would you be able to send me by email this slide? Uh, this slide for, yes, for the... I, I, I will. I will send. Uh, I guess uh, I'll, I'll send to. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. Thank yeah. You. We will also send out a recording um, of this entire presentation that will be available for um, to you for uh, seven sure. days. Um, you okay. will not be able to download it, but you will have um, be able to play it for up to seven days. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, communication. So- Leha, um, we do yeah. have a comment before you go to the next slide. Um, the comment says, do you think a mentor program is helpful for organizations? I, I think so. I think it uh, depends on the size of the organization and then how diverse are the different roles or different functions. Um, but I think in general, a mentor program um, does help. But uh, sometimes um, if it's completely from top down, it's a little bit hard. And then people feel, oh, this is just another job another part of my job I have to do. Uh, I, I find it's more helpful that if the organization create the environment to make it easier for people to find a mentor, but, uh, but make it more grassroots rather than just say, oh, just another thing you need to check off of your list. So I guess one thing I can think of is, you know, if uh, do reward people who mentoring others, right? Um, you know, maybe at the promotional review time and say, hey, uh, are you also growing leaders outside of your direct uh, span of control? If some person yes, and then that's kind of a little plus. So, I mean, that's not the only thing, but that's uh, give you a, that's part of the positive feedback. So uh, I, I, I do believe mentor, I actually, I think I have a little uh, bit about that later too. So I, the answer is yes. Okay, um, feedback. Um, so, we, we touch on the listening skill, the communication a little bit, um, and we can see if we have um, you know, more questions on that uh, after I'm done here. So this, this slide is a kind of about if you are the manager, um, a big part of your job is to talk to other people, right? Talk to your direct reports, uh, talk to other teams, and then keep that communication channel open. So it's, a, it's just a, important element. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is if you are introvert, uh, which I feel like a lot of us are, um, don't, I, I guess I consider myself <laughs> introvert to a certain degree, don't assume that you will not be good at communicating. Um, actually, I think, you know, like there is a book called Quiet. Uh, it talk about uh, the power of introverts. Uh, so I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, equate introvert to bad at com bad at communication. Uh, th those are not the same thing. So you could have advantages because maybe you are, uh, you know, you have better listening skills. So, um, anyways, um, uh, don't discount yourself if you're introvert. Is what I'm trying to say. So on the give constructive feedback. Uh, so similar to the decision making, we talked about uh, you want to do it timely. I think give feedback, you want to do it timely as well. Um, that's important. It doesn't matter if it's uh, positive or negative. Uh, you want to let the other person know, uh, not right away, but maybe the next day, or don't wait two months, right? Um, especially the negative uh, feedback. Uh, I would call it constructive feedback or crucial conversations because sometimes those are uncomfortable. So we tend to uh, not having them. And then we just wait until, if your company has any review process, we just wait until the review time and say, you're not doing well. And uh, the other person is there like, that's a surprise. How come you didn't tell me? I would have had the opportunity to do better, right? So that's not a good way. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, if you feel as so like, I'm not sure I should say something and chances are you probably should say something and you want to learn, you know, you, you want to uh, learn how to be effective in those conversations, but avoiding them is not the way to go. 
And the other pitfall I see uh, managers often fall into is the uh, one-on-one -on -one meetings turn into a project status update meeting. Um, it's very common. We talk about projects, ongoing things, and that's fine, but don't stop there. Uh, do take the time and make the effort and talk about the longer term career growth. Um, you know, ask your team members feedback on what you can do to help them. Ask them what their career aspirations, and they may not know. They may say, I haven't think about, uh, you know, I haven't thought about it. I don't know, this is fine. Uh, but uh, having those conversations do show that you care about their career goals. You do want to invest in that. So that's important. Um, on the can you communicate, don't assume people know. This is uh, obvious, but we often forget. When you know too much, you forget what other people don't know. Uh, so be aware of that. It's always better your team members hear the news, uh, you know, good news or bad news from you directly than from the rumor mill because you can set the proper context you can explain not only the what and how, but also the why. So they can understand why the decision is made like this, even if it's not a popular decision, you know, in the case is uh, bad news, right? Um, so uh, don't assume. Um, if you're not sure, uh, I would say over communicate uh, is better than under communicate. And uh, the other part is the uh, communicate not only across with your uh, sorry, not uh, communicate not only down to your team members, but also up and across. And this is a big part of the manager's job is uh, if your team did something well, do uh, let your managers, your, your, your executives know that uh, here are the great things we're doing. And also if you see there's some risks coming up, um, also bring those up too basically give them the heads up, but at the same time, tell them what you are doing to uh, mitigating those risks, to making sure things will go smoothly. So they have confidence in you, right? Just because it's bad news and it doesn't mean um, that you should hide it from them. You want to be transparent, but at the same time, you want to take the ownership and say, here are the things I'm doing to, uh, to addressing those. Um, and similarly uh, to your peers, managers in other teams, um, you know, sometimes it's just a little misunderstanding, but the teams are not talking to each other, and then it just uh, kind of the relationship decay. So uh, do make sure you be aware and uh, keep those communication open. Uh, adjust your message. So this is, again, um, a lot of it is just common sense. Um, when you talk to different audience, um, you want to use the language that they can understand, try to step in their shoes and trying to think, why do they care? What you want them uh, to, to do, to what actions you want them to take and uh, how you can uh, adjust your message so they are motivated to do what you want them to do, right? Uh, so obviously if the well, same project, if you talk to your technical staff, um, you probably want to, uh, you know, use the uh, more technical terms uh, so they feel you guys speaking the same language. But if you're talking to your CFO, you probably want to avoid those details and more focus on uh, the financial side and then, you know, how you can make things cost effective and how much money is going to make for the company, you know, those things. Uh, so be aware of those. Um, and then um, I, I guess one thing I... I want to mention here is on the executive uh, communication. Let's say if you have a big presentation that you prepared, you have slides, you you know talk to your executives, and then um, you, you find quickly uh, they just lost interest. And you you may so the, I, I feel there are two types. There are the kind of people that they want to know the conclusion first. They want to know what are the problems, what uh, what are the what's the conclusion. Uh, basically your recommendation on what we should do. And then you, you know, go through the details and here are the background, here's the options and here are our considerations. And that's why our, our conclusion is good, right? There are people enjoy, prefer that. 
And then there are people that prefer that um, you describe the, the challenges and then you kind of uh, allow them to uh, solve the problem with you. So like you kind of talk, rather than just give them the, here's the, my recommendation or conclusion, you work through the process um, to kind of let them draw the conclusion and then hopefully happen to be the same one as you do. So there, it's, it's hard to know, of course, if it's the first time you, you talk to them, but uh, over time, uh, hopefully you can figure out uh, their, I guess their preference, their style and then uh, kind of make some adjustment. That's just, a, I guess, as an example, there's no right or wrong, it's just people's preference. So uh, let's see. Okay, so this is uh, try it out. So if you're not a manager yourself, what can you do? Um, again, one-on-one -on -one meetings, right? Um, so we talk about from the manager perspective, don't just use it as a project update meeting. And as a team member, you definitely want to take advantage of these one-on-one -on -one meetings to talk about your career discussions, uh, career, uh, career growth, rather than just tell them what's going on right now. Uh, so it depends on you know, your, your manager. Um, sometimes you may get discouraged. You ask them for their feedback. You, and they say, oh, I mean, you just, you're doing fine. Just continue to do what you're doing. And then you don't really feel you get enough feedback from them. Um, so one exercise I have done in the past, I find it really works out for me and I mean to share here and you can try and see if it works for you. Um, so I call it start, stop, continue. Um, so every so often, let's say six months, I will sit down, I don't know, it probably take about 15 minutes maybe the first time you do it, it takes longer. And then I think about how I spend my time in the past week, or you can do it just past couple of days. I just make a flat list and just write down and say, you know, I spend three hours of work on this PowerPoint for a quarterly update. I spend 30 minutes every other day to answer questions from engineers so-and-so. I spend, you know, whatever that is. There's no thinking, it's just a, snapshot of how you spend your time. Uh, and then you look at the list and then chances are there's a big chunk of those uh, tasks, the things you spend your time on, a core component, core part of your job. That's what makes you successful. And so that's your continual list. Um, and then chances are there's some things on the list that fall on your maybe stop. So this could be things that you have been doing them um, because, you know, when you first started on the team, you're the most junior member on the team, so you were doing them, but over the years, you, it's just a habit. Even if there are other people can do it, um, your time becomes much more valuable, but you continue doing it, um, but, you know, you really can't hand it to somebody else. Uh, there could be things that just, uh, it used to be important, but maybe no longer important, no longer needed. Maybe things that need to be should be automated, but you're still doing it man manually. Like, all kinds of things for reasons, um, you know, I, I can't really list them all here, but you really could stop doing. So that's your maybe stop list. And then maybe, then you probably have a list of things that uh, on your mind that you may want to start doing, but you never have time to do them. So this could be things that are really important to the success of the team, to the team that uh, kind of those uh, important but not urgent category, um, but you never find time. Or it could be things that um, they're really important to you um, for your career growth, things you want to try, uh, but again, you don't have time or you don't have opportunity to do them. So um, once you have this, this doesn't need to be a comprehensive list. Uh, it doesn't need to be well thought out, right? You just more simple. You can take that list and when you have your one-on-one -on -one meeting with your manager, you can go through them and say, here are the things I'm doing. Um, I think these are important. I should spend time and make sure your manager agree with you. And sometimes he may say, no, like this is not important. Don't spend too much time, right? And then you talk about the stop uh, list uh, to see if you agree. And you talk about your start. So this will give you some concrete examples 
um, to talk about rather than just in general, do you have any feedback for me? So even if the first time you do this exercise with your manager, if he still kind of say, ah, you know, brush her off, don't be discouraged by it. Uh, you know, wait a month or two, uh, come back with the update list and have the same conversation. If you find that exercise is helpful for you, or it could be a variation of this, right? And then basically at the end of the day, we are the one need to be in charge of our career growth. So we need to be the one that drive those conversations. Um, those are important. And also, I guess, when you do your staff stop continuous, uh, chances are you're going to share uh, your accomplishments, your ideas, you know, that's part of that conversation too. So. Lehan, we have a comment in the chat box. Yes, please. Uh, Michelle wants to know, what advice would you give to someone who was previously in a junior role on a team but is now in a leadership role, how can they build credibility and garner respect? Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think especially if you have kind of friends in the team that you started around the same time, now they're your you are their manager. Sometimes it's like, how do I uh, draw the line? Um, so there is a great book actually. I think it's called The Making of a Manager. Uh, by Julia Jaw, I think. Uh, I, can, I can send the book out um, uh, when we send out the slides. I think she talked about this topic specifically, but I think in general, um, you want to be humble. You want to have the empathy. It's not like now you're a manager, you can't talk to them anymore. But on the other hand, uh, you also uh, want to be aware um, to um, kind of say, you know, we're great friends outside of work, but, I, you know, work is work. You know, we do need to have those um, business discussions. So if that's a friend's conversation, uh, you know, a, a situation. But I think in general that uh, you are promoted at, to the manager role because you have done something really well. So trust the system and trust yourself. Don't have the imposter syndrome and say, oh, you know, like I, maybe I'm not as good. I don't know how to do that. So first, believe in yourself. And second, um, do believe that um, your team members, um, their trust, you, have, you can earn their trust by uh, keep their best interest in your heart, right? Like if they need help, you are the one that jumped in to help them. And rather than just say, I'm the manager, you just need to listen to me. I mean, of course we don't do that, but you know, like, you know what I mean? Is like, uh, we, we, really we, we can't lead from distance. We can't just say, now you need to listen to me. Our job is really, I guess we need to have the serving mentality. Our job is really to uh, think about how we can you know, help them rise up and how we can enable them to do uh, to to do their job. So if they roll, they write into roadblocks that we are the one to help them remove those roadblocks. And maybe they've been waiting for another team to do something. And then we go there, we have the hard conversation with the other team's manager and, uh, you know, uh, help the team member to unblock themselves. And so I, I don't know, like, uh, I, I would recommend that book, but I think in general, really the trust from our team members, uh, they, they're earned. And we do need to believe in ourselves, believe in the system that we, you know, we're promoted for good reason. Um, don't second guess ourselves. So, um, okay, so, uh, uh, the other uh, communication skills. So I guess um, uh, listen with empathy, help others hear your voice, improve business writing skills. So there, I, I, I don't think we have time to really drill in to talk about this, but I do have a book recommendation um, in case you haven't uh, read the, uh, probably many of you heard of this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, I actually recommend, if you have kids, I actually recommend the version called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. The reason why I recommend that teens version, the teens is re, uh, was written by Sean Covey, the son of uh, Stephen Covey, the original author. 
is because I feel the, the, the one for teens version is a much easier read, uh, but it's really conveyed uh, similar concepts. And then I think he talked about the communication skills um, in kind of the second half of the book. Um, so, so I think he has some good tips. And also the reason why I say, if you have kids read the teens version is like, then you can hand that book to your teenager, you know, sons or daughters when they get to that age. And then you guys will have something like you kind of read the same book and you can talk about it. Um, I, I, I mean, if you have a teenager kids, I definitely recommend that book to, to, you know, to the kids as well. So, um, so, so that, that would be a book recommendation. And I do want to, sorry, I think we are running over, but I, I do want to touch on this next topic, which is the mentor topic. We talked about it uh, from the manager, uh, I guess from a different perspective, like uh, how to uh, make your team better. But I also uh, think it's important to build your own personal board of directors. So manager, of course, is element. Mentor uh, is another important. Uh, role. So this is somebody that probably familiar with your role uh, and or your organization. So they know about your job enough so they can give some meaningful advice, feedback, but they don't work in your group so they can see things from distance rather than get too involved. Um, they have your best interests in their heart, uh, but they can also deliver uh, the tough uh, feedback that uh, you, need to, you need to hear, uh, but you may or may not want to hear. So they can look at things and say, you know, if I were the manager, I understand your manager frustrate you, but if I was your manager, I probably would do the same thing. Here are the reasons, you know, like those conversations. So, um, and sponsor, this is uh, probably an executive in your organization or in your company that outside of your organization that who can help you understand the bigger picture and also uh, to kind of uh, see your potential and believe in you and then if there are bigger opportunities that uh, they can uh, kind of um, uh, I guess champion for you and the last one is critics and these are the people that you think that just oh my gosh this person just hate me he doesn't know she doesn't like my work my job my work um, but if you can somehow figure out a way to build relationship and to understand where they come from, and uh, that could actually give you a, a different uh, insight and aspects of uh, what are some of the things you can uh, improve. And also by having a relationship rather than just write them off, uh, it probably will benefit you rather than just a friction point, uh, it actually I like. So, those are some of the tips. Like I said, we don't have time to talk about time management, uh, but I did list some of the pretty common techniques or tools that you can just Google them and you can do, you know, read research and there are plenty of resources out there. But do keep in mind if you are struggle with time management as a manager, especially if you're new to the role, you're not alone, many of us do. Uh, it's just uh, something you need to be aware and manage, and uh, it's something you, you, you can get better at. So on the try it out, again, um, many of the time management skills for managers uh, are applicable to individual contributors. But I do want to mention one specific tip here, uh, less about time management, more about just the annual review process. Uh, I, I think it really worked out for me. I tell people you should write, if your company has any review process, you should write that review document at the beginning of the year rather than at the end. What I mean by that is you look at your company's mission, vision, you know, our organization objectives, KPIs, uh, whatever the big goals, and then think about uh, what are some of the goals, career goals you want to have. And then you write that skeleton document uh, at the beginning of the year. And uh, uh, over time, as you accomplish something, you go back, you update that document, you add the meat to it. And so this will serve two uh, purposes. One is you don't forget uh, what you did, the great things you did over the year, right? Because you have this kind of living document you keep updating. 
And the other one is if you find you spend a lot of time working on things that do not align with any of those bigger goals, then you should question yourself, should you be spending time working on those? Maybe, you know, maybe the answer is yes, you should, uh, but that should be a intentional decision rather than an accident. So I, I think uh, that's something to keep in mind. And then that, I guess I put in the time management context is sometimes if you struggle with the time, you should ask yourself that question. So, uh, any, sorry, I rushed a little bit. Any questions? Um, there is a comment here in the uh, chat box from Margaret. She says, need to leave. Thank you for the information, super helpful. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I think that is, uh, probably the last slide content wise. Uh, so this is my last slide and I, I will stick around if you know we have more questions, we can talk more. So uh, just to wrap things up, you don't need a title to be a leader, right? We talked about uh, to be a leader, you just need to have followers. Uh, people follow you because you have integrity and competency and they know you will lead them to the right places. And that's really all uh, it takes to be a leader. So uh, with that, I, I think I'll wrap up the full, kind of the formal presentation part, but please do ask any questions you may have. Uh, I don't have anything after this, so uh, I can uh, stick around for a little, uh, little bit. So 